Hello, you're listening to The Crime Cafe, where we get down and dirty with crime, suspense, and thriller authors. I'm Debbie Mack, your host, and before we get to today's guest, here's a quick reminder. The Crime Cafe Season 1 Story Package is available for sale at crimecafe.net. The story package is a collection of crime and thriller stories contributed by all the authors appearing here on Crime Cafe, and it's only 99 cents. It's a real deal. So check it out. And with that out of the way, I'm very pleased to introduce my guest, Bill Kreider. Bill has written about a million books. Isn't that right, Bill? <laughs> it's somewhere in that neighborhood, yes. <laughs> well... <laughs> More, more like maybe 75 or 100. I, I don't count. Well, that's, that's pretty close to a million in my opinion. <laughs> I am just so impressed with your uh, bibliography and uh, with the variety of books that you've written. You've written in all sorts of different genres. Uh, tell me why you chose those genres. Uh, horror, Western, mystery, all of them. Young Good adult question. even. <laughs> uh, I, most of the writers that I admired when I was just reading all the time were uh, writers who had done a little bit of everything. And so after I sold the first uh, mystery novels, I, I told my agent that I'd like to write a Western. And she said, okay, write a Western. So I did. And uh, then uh, this was... In the late 80s, you know, horror novels were big in those days, and everybody was selling horror novels. So I said to the agent, why don't I write a horror novel? So, <laughs> so I did. And in those days, I was much younger and wrote much faster, and that's why <laughs> so many books, so many different kinds. I had fun writing all of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something must have sparked your interest, though, I was thinking, particularly, say, with the Westerns. Are you interested in the history of the West? Uh, yes, but mainly I was interested in all those B-Westerns I watched when I was growing up. And most of my Westerns are less historical than they are tributes to those B-Western movies I saw. And they uh, were great movies. Oh, well... Maybe not great, but they were <laughs> they were they were fun. Yeah, and I love them. Still, are you a fan of John Ford? I have to oh, ask. As a movie, read, I mean, I've seen many of the John Ford movies because when I was growing up, that's when they were coming out, and so I saw them in the theater when I was a kid, like The Searchers and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon and all the cavalry movies with John Wayne and. Stagecoach. Stagecoach was a little before my time, but I saw it on TV many times. <laughs> Ford Apache. <laughs> there you go. And that's, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, mine too. And I tell you, I could talk movies all day. <laughs> well, talking westerns, I could go with you on my. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, tell us about your latest book. Okay, the latest book is called Between the Living and the Dead. And the truth is, I got the idea for this. I was in the Walmart parking lot, <laughs> and I saw a ghost hunter's van. Uh, and I live in this little bitty town, Alvin, Texas, population mm -hmm. probably 22,000. And I thought, you know, if Alvin has my little county that I write about have ghost hunters. Uh, and there's a character in my books uh, who is a little uh, odd, so to speak. And I thought, there's a guy who would go into the ghost hunting business in a heartbeat. And so I, and he's a college teacher in the book, but I gave, I, it was summer. So his summer job, he opens a ghost hunting business. And sure enough, uh, somebody's murdered in a house that's reputedly haunted. Hmm. And that's where the story takes off with, I don't want to say too much about it, but yes, absolutely. Haunted house, murder, possible ghostly stuff. <laughs> well, it sounds interesting having that paranormal element combined with the mystery. That's the first time I've ever tried that. 
So we'll see how it works. It's very different. So uh, good luck with that. And I'd be interested in seeing it when it comes out. Well, it will um, be five more days. Five more days. <laughs> All right. Look for it, everybody. Uh, in Week fact, by the time this comes up, probably it will be out. <laughs> Publishers Weekly and Kirkus liked it. So wonderful. Now, if the readers like it, we're okay. There you go. <laughs> but if Kirkus likes it, you're doing well. <laughs> Um, do all of your stories take place in Texas? Almost everything I've ever written takes place in Texas. Not a hundred percent, but close. I, uh, I collaborated on two books with Willard Scott and those are set in Virginia. And I wrote some pen name books that are set in various places in the, around the world, but most of the stuff that I've done under my own name is Texas. Small mm -hmm. town Texas, too. Good. I think that's really great. Um, parts of the world that most people don't get to see. Yeah. A lot of times when people think about Texas, they think of Houston or Dallas. Uh, I've only been to Austin myself, but um, well, Texas... I have one book about Austin. That's cool. I'll have to read it. And one book about Houston. So. <laughs> They're very different towns, <laughs> from what I understand. Yeah, different books, too, I guarantee. <laughs> well, Texas has a fascinating history. I've always been rather fascinated with the fact that it used to be a republic and then yep. became a state. So Texans are all very proud of that, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> Texas pride. Yeah. Uh, one notable exception was the short story you included in the uh, Crime Cafe story package, which takes place in, of all places, Monte Carlo. Tell us about that. Where did you get the idea for that one? And don't ask me. I do not know. I wrote that book for an anthology, which I believe was called Cat Crimes on Vacation. I, don't hold me to that, but I think so. And so the story had to take place. Nobody goes to on vacation in little towns in Texas. So <laughs> I decided that I would put it in an exotic locale like Monaco, where I have never visited. Uh, but I've read books and seen movies. So <laughs> that's where that story came from. And if it had Monte Carlo, it had to have gambling. So, And besides, I like the title of the story. I came up with title first, uh, which... Now I'm not sure I can remember it. Let's see. How I found a cat lost true love and broke the bank at Monte Carlo. Something like that. Yes. Yeah, something like I that. I love that. I love the title. So there came the story. I love the cat. <laughs> I have to say. Cats. <laughs> I'm a huge cat fan. I noticed that your website has pictures of your cats. All cats now deceased, unfortunately. Aww. But Nonetheless. They were, they were much loved while they were here. That's great. I love cats. Yeah, me too. And um, let's see, I was going to say, did you have to do a lot of research to figure out the, the whole gambling aspect of that story? Because the system that this guy has. I read a good bit about roulette and decided it's impossible, but in a story it's possible. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. I read a lot of articles about that and that the possibility of that happening. So that's wow. where it Because I thought that was really, really interesting. Well, I prefer wondered... to make stuff up, but sometimes I'm forced to do research. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if that technique that you that was mentioned in the story was real. Yes. Okay. Semi real anyway. So, so that was real. Yeah. And then the whole idea coming from that was something that you had come up with. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting for anyone who's listening. The story is really creative and exciting and suspenseful and fun and very enjoyable. Yeah. I loved it. It um, was nominated for an Anthony Award, but did not win. Well, I can see why it was nominated. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I'm thoroughly enjoying your uh, your your Burns book. Oh, the Carl Taking Burns. Place. Carl Burns. 
I, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying one of those books now. He has a great sense of humor, and you have a wonderful dry wit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've almost all my books are sort of humorous mysteries. Not all, but almost all. Well, that's good. I like that kind of thing. And writing about a college English teacher was a natural. <laughs> you taught college? Oh, yeah. English? For many years. Oh, my goodness. Not in a college that in any way resembles the college in the book, of course, but did teach college. Where did you teach? Uh, well, for the last 19 years, I taught at Alvin Community College, and prior to that, I taught at Howard Payne University, which is in West Texas, in Brownwood. I see. Both excellent places. Do you feel like that experience added in any way to your story ideas, or...? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've, written, environment? I've also written a series of books with a female college English teacher, and they're set in a community college, which, of course, in no way resembles the community college where I taught. But mm -hmm. I have, I like <laughs> writing book. I, I like academic mysteries, and so I like writing academic mysteries. They're fun. That's cool. You know, I've noticed that your style seems to be less hard boiled or cozy rather than somewhat humorous, edgy. I'm not sure how, how I like that description. How would you describe it? I like humorous edgy. My <laughs> former agents said that they were hard boiled cozies. That's interesting. And I guess humorous edgy kind of comes yeah. along the same line. Because they've got an edge to them that makes them more than just, you know, sweet little cozies. That's right. But at the same time there's a humor to them that kind of lightens them a bit. Yes, definitely. And, Humor yeah. is there, almost always there. It's one, they're wonderful. And um, I was just, uh, as I was telling you before we started the interview, your um, book collection is impressive. <laughs> and I love that your office is as cluttered as mine, more so even possibly. Behind me, the tip of the iceberg, I'm looking in front of me at a lot more books than that. Oh my gosh, that that's like heaven for me. Uh, You're sitting in my version of heaven, books everywhere. That's where I'm sitting. <laughs> um, so what other movies are your favorites other than the B-Westerns and the Westerns in general? Well, other than Westerns in general, I, I like a lot of uh, science fiction movies. I like, uh, I watched a when I was a kid, you know, there's little, I live in a little bitty town. There's one or two theaters. So you, you get to see a lot of bad movies because a lot of them were bad. And I saw all the bad 50s science fiction movies. <laughs> came out, and all those Edgar Allan Poe movies that Roger Corman did and some of his other movies. But I love those things. I, you know, I can't help it. I, I love that stuff. Uh, but I like when Star Wars came along, that was a real revelation. I love Star Wars. Yeah. I like that kind of movies. My wife says, or said, she's passed away. But anyway, I liked uh, movies with explosions. In them. <laughs> Who doesn't love a movie with an explosion in it? <laughs> That's right. A friend of mine and I say, you can improve any movie with a few explosions. And I've Maybe always... True, yeah, I've always thought that Star Wars had one of the best beginnings of all time, the way not only the credits roll, but the way you immediately go to action with the scene of those ships looming on the screen and the firing of the guns back and forth. It's well, such an arresting visual image. And, and it's even better if you were my age and had grown up with all those cheap and terrible special effects of the <laughs> where they're using aluminum pie pans for flying saucers and and then to see that come on the screen it was oh man you just can't imagine how that felt <laughs> you just kind of get pushed back in your chair like <gasps> that's right exactly yeah. 
it, it was a breathtaking sort of experience. I agree a hundred percent. Ah, so well, I only have a minute left, so if you'd like to talk a little bit about the places you've traveled, I know you've traveled a bit, and I would love to hear about that. Well, I've been a few places, and the most exotic would be Peru. Uh, and that's another thing that somebody, my daughter had a friend who knew somebody who was going to take a bunch of people to Peru, and she said, would you like to go? And I said, why not? And wow. so we went to uh, Lima and Cusco, and then we got to take the train and go to Machu Picchu, which was a really great experience. That was, I'd always wanted to go. And That's fascinating. Yeah, it was. You got to climb the um, steps of the various. Yes, yeah. not everybody did that, but by golly, I was, I was determined to do that. Good for you. Good it's, for uh, you. It's the altitude is not as great there as it is in the city in Cusco, but it's still an altitude. And so it was tough for some people to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Tough for me too, but as I was, as I say, I was determined. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. It was a beautiful place. It, it looks even better than the pictures. Well, someday I'll have to go there and see it for myself. If, if you can do it. Okay, well, that's great. And um, the name of your latest book again is what? Between the Living and the Dead. Between the, the Living. Is... <laughs> Between the Living and the Dead. That's a quotation from William Wordsworth. Well, on that literary note, we'll have to end things. But <clears throat> I just wanted to mention one last time that the Crime Cafe Season 1 Story Package will be available for sale, is available for sale, at crimecafe.net. It's only 99 cents and includes stories from all the authors interviewed here at the Crime Cafe. So, until next time, thanks a lot, and keep reading.